Good morning. He is risen. Uh, I have two announcements. First of all, Pastor William, stand up. Hello, Pastor. Yes. Good to have you back with us. Yeah, thank you. Glad yeah. to be here. Pastor William's going to be leading our worship this morning. We're really, really pleased to have him back. Um, so yeah, thank you, William, Pastor William, for being with us. The other one is, in case you haven't heard, um, our dear sister Darrell Bowles passed on Thursday. And uh, I can tell you in my, you know, many of us had conversations with her. She was looking forward to going to be with Jesus. Um, so it's a good thing that, I mean, we always, we, we are sad, but she knew where she was going. We know where she is. And she told my wife and I about two weeks ago that she's getting to heaven first, but when, when we get there after her, there's going to be a big hug waiting there for us. So that's the kind of faith she had. Um, so, I mean, the information for her funeral and, and visitation, everything is out there. But we remember the Bulls family in our prayers this morning and, and thank God for her faith and her witness to us in her life. So that's, that's everything. So if there's anything else, um, Pastor William, you can begin our service. Good morning. Good morning. Cry is risen. Uh, first of all, before we start, I would like to thank you so much for inviting me again here. I'm so happy to see you again here. Uh, we continue with our service and after the service, so I'm going to stand there. If you want to come and hug me or shake my hand, I'm available there. I miss all of you. <laughs> uh, the kid, I, when I hear, there's some young kid now, they are men like me and they are taller. So in our home, yeah, who's the youngest one? He's taller than anybody at home. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so uh, let us start our service with uh, the first hymn. Uh, you can remain uh, sitting, and then you can stand with invocation after the hymn. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He who dwell in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will, I will say the Lord, Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, whom I trust. Taking refuge in mercy of the Lord, and let us come before him in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by the thing we have done and by what we have failed to do. We have not honored you as we have, nor have we served others in love. We deserve to be cast from your presence. Yet in your great mercy, you send your Son to die and rise again for us. Help us to know the power of his resurrection and to share with the joy that he forgives. Enable us to receive your mercy and to believe by your Spirit that we may honor you and the Lord and God in whom we place our Almighty God and your Heavenly Father, hear our prayer and answer them for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ. By faith we stand at his cross and empty tomb. And we point our refuge, sing for joys in the shadow of his wing. As the ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Maybe it's in its place for him of praise.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we will celebrate the trumpet of our risen Savior. May we join with all other witnesses of the resurrection in holy sharing with the world that Jesus is Lord and God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who live and reign with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Acts 5. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priests rose up, and all who were with them, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they, when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now when the high priest came and those who were with him, they called together the council, all the senate of the people of Israel, and sent to the, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find them in prison. So they returned and reported, we found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And someone came to them and told them, look, the men who you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain of the officers went and brought them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charged you not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled um, Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on the tree. God exalted him at his right side, at his right hand, as leader and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him, and this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 148 responsively. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in all the heights. Praise him, all the angels. Praise him, all the souls. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. And he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great creatures in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and mist, storming wind, fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Earth and heaven. 
kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. Young men and maidens together, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, his majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his servants. For the people of Israel who are near to him, praise the Lord. The epistle reading is taken from Revelation 1, verses 4 to 18. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth, to him who loves and who has freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamum, and to Thyatira and Sardis, and to Philadelphia and Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and I, on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a god of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like the wool, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were a flame of fire. His feet were like a burnished bronze, refined in a furnace. And his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. And from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun, shining full, in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not. I am the first and the last, and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the door being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jewish. And Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hand and his side. And then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them, 
again, peace be with you. Had the Father uh, sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he pressed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, and if you forgive the sin of any, they are forgiven them. And if you with all forgiveness from any, it is with all. And now Thomas, one of the twelve called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciple told him, And we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hand the mark of his nail and place my finger into the mark of the nail and place my hand into sight, I will never believe. A day later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the door were locked, and Jesus came, he stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hand, and put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe, and Thomas answered him, My Lord, and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated and we continue with a hymn of Alleluia. <laughs>
Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus the Messiah, the Father's Son, in truth and love. Jesus' first day word to his disciple after resurrection. Peace be with you. The topic is from St. John chapter 20 today. Last week, we hear the seven word when we celebrate this Good Friday, the crucifixion of our Lord. And Jesus on the cross, he says seven word, Father forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Today you shall be with me in paradise. Woman, behold thy son. My God, my God, why has you forsaken me? I thirst, it is finished. Father, into your hand I commend my spirit. The seven last word gave us a powerful insight into the thought as took all the sin of mankind upon himself. Jesus encouraged the believer with the blessing, peace be with you. There's the two words we are going to talk today. Jesus encouraged us as a believer and follower of him. We will want to believe what Jesus tell us. And we will rejoice when Jesus show us his peace. Everyone lacked gift. We seldom deserve to be given a gift. The giver gave a gift freely. Our loving Heavenly Father is the only one who gave us a good and perfect gift. The Lord God is the only giver who knows exactly what we need and freely give us exactly what we need. Consider the disciple shortly before his crucifixion, Jesus gave them the perfect gift that they desperately needed. Even though they did not realize at that time. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gave do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not let it be a prayer. Gospel John chapter 14. God gave us his strength and courage and perfect gift. Peace be with you. When we believe what Jesus taught us, it was still the day of Jesus' resurrection. The disciples gathered behind door locked, and they gathered together in fear. They saw what the Jew did to Jesus, crucify him. Even though the door were locked, Jesus came to be with them. Peace be with you. Again, Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. And they need to hear this word. And Jesus breathing on them and gave a gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise and inspire the same word, gift of Holy Spirit, worth the faith to better understand the Lord is peace. And Jesus was sending them to proclaim the message of peace and forgiveness of sin. Some is not were there 
of that time. They did not hear Jesus' word of peace. They did not see him. The disciple persists. The disciple kept telling him, we have seen the Lord. And Thomas was simply not ready or willing to listen to the truth. Not comfort, a peace. And Jesus repeatedly the much needed word, peace be with you. It was imperative for the disciple to listen. And we also still need to listen to the Lord promise for us every day. And we dare not underestimate the importance of hearing God's word. The scriptures clearly explain from prophet Isaiah say, Lord, we believe our message. So then faith come from hearing the message and the message come through the word of Christ. Again, St. Paul also reminds us from Romans chapter 10 that the disciples would need to hear God's word over and over, again and again. He take time for the diff of the meaning of the Lord's love for us to suck in. The power of God's word is proclaimed in the simple message. Peace be with you. He is risen. He is not here. Faith come from here. The blood of Jesus purified us from sin. And God, living and active and powerful word, is strength us and we are comfortable and we are comfort and comfortable by God's word of peace. Today's society does not have peace. Some are very fearful about the future, about the economy, about their health, and we may even worry a bit too much about what is often in our day-to-day -day life. War, death, displacement, for instance, for people of Ukraine who are murdered, children and women, destruction around the world, many countries. The suffering by so many, so many things. I remember an example in 2013 when the South Sudan president ordered his bodyguard to murder to murder his own people in the eye of the world. And also, not only South Sudan, not only Ukraine, but some country also, they go through this difficult time. They worry, they worry for day life. They don't know what is gonna to happen tomorrow. People waiting to die and waiting to leave. And some of the country around the world who have at war. And those who have been to horrific time, I such a general feeling of unease. It is any listening. It is any anyone pay attention to the Lord. The Lord warning his people in the Old Testament. The warning of fly to us today. Look, the day are coming. Declare the Lord. God, when I will send a permanent into the land, not a permanent for the bread, nor thirsty for water, but rather a permanent of hearing the word of the Lord. The Lord Jesus gave the disciple his peace. The world did not provide. The Lord Jesus gave the disciple his peace. The world did not provide. Then Jesus said, I am also sending you. And they were to take that message of peace 
into the world. It is the same message of peace that live in our heart, comfort our soul. It is the very same message of peace we can hear with other people. Peace be with you. And there is only place to find peace. Only one way to have peace. Peace is born alone in Christ. His life, death, resurrection. And he was Christ for the guilt our sin deserved. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wound we are healed. Prophet Isaiah said, Jesus was the punish for our guilt. Our sin are freely, freely forgiven. And we are at peace with God. Peace be with you. Our ears are open to hear, heart ready to believe in what Jesus tells us. And when we rejoice, when Jesus shows us the disciples live in fear on the first resurrection Sunday. Women had reported Jesus' resurrection. And Thomas declared, unless he see, I will never believe. Quite purpose to make these words after the disciples keep telling him, We have seen the Lord, as did the woman. Now all the disciples heard peace. The disciples rejoice when they saw the Lord. It is a week later, Jesus' disciple is still meeting behind locked door and Jesus arrived. And Jesus' message did not change. Peace be with you. And some has heard this message. Jesus invited him. Look, touch, do not doubt. Believe, my Lord, my God, some has heard peace. And so Jesus confessed the faith. And Jesus assured the Psalmist about his faith. Saw and believe, rejoice. And Jesus did many miracles after resurrection. And Jesus was alive, God's son. His scripture gave us ever Thing we need to know Jesus is the Christ. Internal life. The miracle always surrounding Jesus did not sin, resist Satan. Put to death, buried, rose again on the third day, a fear to disciple. Peace be with you. The miracles surround us every day. How many miracles have you seen today? Each of us have witnessed a more miracle than we can count. Today, every day, sunrise, sunset, a star in the sky are placed there by God. Season change, and we get up each morning from repression, rest our loving Heavenly Father for white. And we look at our hand feet, and we come our air, and we breathe, and our heart pump a gallon of blood every minute of every day, and we do not have to think about breathing, or our heart beating, for you create me inner organ, and you weep me together in my mother womb. I praise you because I am pure fully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and my soul knows that they will. Psalm 139. Knowing that the Lord has created us, comfort us. Knowing the Lord God of heavenly is a miraculous care for us, set us apart from the world around us. Our world has no peace. They do not know God. Many dread the future. They have no anchor. They fear. They are afraid. They worry. A dear believer, you know the truth. 
Christ is our cornerstone. The resurrection of Jesus changed our internal destiny, changed our earthly living, and we have heard God's truth, listening, believe, and we have seen love of the Lord in our life daily of today. He has shown you and me what is good. And what does the Lord require from you and me? Except to care our justice and love mercy and to walk humbly with God. What an amazing gift God gave to us. Peace. And we are humble. We love mercy. God has shown us the day without the Lord is dreadful day. In broad sense, this dread describes our world today. People do not feel comfortable at all when they realize they have little or no control at all over of their life. And we know who is in control. Absolute control. You and me, we know. The powerful control, perfect loving control. It's not a government. It's not our own people reasoning. It is the Lord God of heaven who have seen his power, power to do everything for the good of those who love him. And you and me who have showed this so that we could know that the Lord is God. And there is none except him alone. The miracle of faith is the greatest miracle. God gave us faith. And we are peace. Simply a powerful peace be with you. And Jesus teach us a many things so that we believe. Forgiveness bring us peace and love. Jesus show us many things so that we can rejoice. The powerful resurrection, but there is even more. But as it is written, what no eye has seen and no ear has heard, and no human mind has conceived. And that is what God has prepared for those who love him. Lastly, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We have seen much, heard much our loving Heavenly Father has prepared even more than our mind can imagine. It is begin with comfort and strength. Peace be with you. Amen. And may the peace of God Transcend all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please we stand for the hymn. Uh, we're going to stand for this hymn, okay? Okay. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Please remain in standing. Let us confess our faith together with words of Apostle, of word of our Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born to burden man, suffered and Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and died. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven. And sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, the whole Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. <coughs> Gracious God, you are exalted over all things in heaven and in earth. In your mercy, you shower us with blessings of both body and soul as you care for your creation. Enable us to see your hand at work in our midst and that together with all those who share in the power of your Son, resurrection. And we always say of you, you, you alone are Lord, Lord and God. Giver of life, you renew our soul through the power of your Holy Spirit as we dwell in the shadow of your wing, and as we continue to celebrate the joys of our Savior, Israel, victory, Grant that your church on earth always speak your word with boldness and confidence, and then like the first eyewitness of the Christ's resurrection, and we share with all people, you, you alone are Lord, Lord and God. God. In your son earthly minister, people brought to him all those who were sick and suffering, and that he may touch and heal them. And this minister of healing continued to his disciple in the early church. Even now, we know that Jesus healed, renew, and restore through the meaning of grace, and he has provided for our benefit. Place your healing hand upon those for in need in the shadow of your healing prison, and we boldly confess. You alone are Lord and God. And we pray for the people of Ukraine and that they may be kept from harm. And we pray for the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Ukraine and Bishop and that their heart may find rest and comfort in Christ. And we pray for government leaders everywhere that they may be inclined to, to walk in the way of righteousness and cease military hostility. In the midst of the end curtain from war, may we all boldly proclaim. You alone are Lord and God. And we pray for the outreach and minister of Hope Lutheran Church. And may we be emboldened to love each other and our neighbor in the spirit of our mission statement, trusting in Jesus, reaching out, serving others. And we pray for the planning meeting this week for the upcoming community outreach event in June. May your spirit empower us to proclaim to each other and to those in our neighbor. You, you are Lord, Lord, our Lord and God. And we bring all this prayer before you, gracious Father, in the name of him who is risen from the dead, and reign with you forever as our Lord and God, and Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, please, for the second hymn. <laughs> Thank you. 
you know this one, you're welcome to sing along. If you're not, um, if you don't know this one, you can learn a new hymn today. It's called Christ is Risen. Our tithes and offering are now presented with thanks and praise to God. Merciful Father, you are offered with joy and thanksgiving what you have just given us, our souls, our time, and our possessions. Receive them for the sake of Him who offered Himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
and we want to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with His favor and give you His peace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our clothing hymn is from Lutheran Service Book 549. That's the hymn by announces. <laughs> service is done go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.